Hey, Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker, That Buzz Guy here for another exciting, adventurous episode of That Buzz Guy on the podcast and on the YouTube video channel. You guys go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker TV. You can watch it there. And if you are watching it and you just need to listen to it, go to any of your favorite podcasting apps and you should be able to listen to it on those. It is uh, the first day of February. We are already in the second month of the year, so that means tomorrow is Tuesday, February the 2th. That's a 2 on the second month on a Tuesday and Groundhog Day, so looking forward to that. But uh, this is going to be uh, just kind of another journaling type episode, but I think I'm going to title it... um, um, what am I going to title it? How about uh, Take a Chance? Something like either Take a Chance or Go For It or um, something like that. So so what I'm going to do is get, tell you guys a story and let you guys know why sometimes it is worth going for it. Sometimes you just got to do it. Sometimes you got to take a chance. So uh, maybe that'll be the title. Sometimes you just got to take a chance. So, my father-in-law passed away this weekend, and we've got his funeral this Wednesday. And so, thinking back about uh, he and I's relationship, not only he was he my father-in-law, but he was my boss for 10 years. And so, had he not been my boss, he would not be my father-in-law, and I would not be doing what I'm doing today. So I'm going to give you guys a quick, quick, just uh, hopefully a brief history of how I got from what I was doing to what I'm doing now because of him. So here's the story real quick. So I um, got out of college and I was working in uh, from Enid, Oklahoma, but I ended up uh, down in Oklahoma City working in Oklahoma City. And I started working for a place called Scrivener, which... Uh, Printed, laid out, and printed grocery ads for retail stores all over all over the place. And so I was working in the layout department as a layout artist. And this was about four, five years, um, three, man, three, three years out of college. So I was just still trying to build up my resume. Um, I was basically a layout artist, didn't have a whole lot of uh, exciting creative stuff in my portfolio. And so every time I would go look for a job, you know, they would say I didn't have enough experience or I didn't have enough stuff in my portfolio. And so this is 1988, yeah, probably somewhere around 1988, 89. And so this was before the internet, before computers, before smartphones, before social media, uh, before all that stuff. So, so working in that department uh, for a while, I think I'd been, I'd, I started kind of in the sign department and I was working in the layout department and um, again in Oklahoma City. And so one of the ads that we did was for a company in Enid, Oklahoma. And I thought that was pretty cool because here I was working in Oklahoma City, working in a department where we did an ad. Basically, we laid out, well, we didn't even lay it out. They, they were laying it out and they would bring the layout down to us and then our department would typeset this ad and then we would shoot the um, film for it and then do the actual printing and then ship it back up to Enid. And so the company was called Evans Drug, and so uh, it was owned by Jim Evans, and Jim Evans' wife, Betty Evans, would drive down to Oklahoma City, bring us the layout. They had a they had an advertising guy up here in Enid that would lay out the ad. Betty would bring it down, get it typeset, and uh, then we would print it and get it back up here. And so I kind of knew of Betty because I worked in that department. I don't. I didn't ever really work on her ad, but the girl that I was dating at the time uh, did the typesetting for the ad. So anyway, so uh, you know, time kind of went on. Uh, you know, a couple months, a year doing that, and then 
uh, I decided to leave Scrivener and I was going to go look for another job. Um, and the girl that I was dating, who we were talking about getting married, so we weren't going to be able to stay in the same department. She was going to stay there. And so um, just out of the blue, one day, you know, this, is, this was the first go for it. So sometimes you just, you just got to go for it. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to uh, just look for another job. Uh, and so I believe, you know, thinking back, I believe it was probably a Sunday uh, because Sunday newspapers back then had most of the jobs. Uh, the Daily Oklahoman, which usually had a ton of jobs in it, and they had them broken down by category. So I was going to look for, you know, kind of a graphic design or advertising or marketing type uh, job. So, I mean, it's all, all you know, you, you might call it random. Uh, you know, there was no rhyme or reason why it was the day, the week that I picked, but I picked this certain Sunday of this one weekend to go for it and I looked in the paper and there was an ad for an advertising director for a company in Enid, Oklahoma. And at the time I didn't know it, but it was what we call a blind ad. And so it said that the company was J.S. Gregory, which being from Enid, I had never heard of. So I didn't know, it didn't have an address. It just had, well, it did have, it had a P.O. box to send a resume to. And so, and they were in it, I don't, I'm not sure how much description it had in the ad for the advertising director, but for me, you know, that was a titled position. That was director of advertising, and here I was, you know, layout artist. And so, you know, on a normal day, if I wasn't really wanting to find a job, I probably would have thought I didn't have enough experience and I was way underqualified for the job, but I decided, especially since it was in Enid, I thought, well, that would be kind of cool to be able to move back to Enid and live in Enid. And so um, I went for it. It was kind of one of those deals, fake it until you make it. Uh, you know, I, I knew enough about advertising and, and graphic design and what I was doing that I thought I could probably you know, make it th through, you know, the job, whatever they threw at me, I'm pretty, sh I was pretty sure I'd be able to, um, you know, handle it. So I, I think, uh, I don't even think I had a resume at that time. So I got a resume ready and I sent it off to Enid, Oklahoma, and I did not apply for any other jobs. And I don't even know that there were any other jobs in Oklahoma City in that field at the time. So uh, a little while later, I got a phone call from somebody, and it was a lady, and she said, Curtis, this is Betty Evans in Enid, Oklahoma. And I said, you know, hello. And she said, did you know that we were the ones that were running the ad for advertising director? And I said, no. And it was Evans Drug that was the one running the ad. And she said, Jim would like you to come up to Enid and interview for the job. And I said, great, I will be there. So we set up an interview for, you know, probably the next week. And so, um, you know, basically I just took uh, all the knowledge that I had and went up and met with Jim and Betty and applied for the job, did the interview. And they, you know, asked me all the questions that they asked me and I did my best and, and they knew that I knew how to lay out the ads. And so that was the majority, the major part of the job at that point was laying out the weekly, I believe we were doing weekly pony tabs that were like, uh, I think they were eight pages uh, with lots of items and, and the items, you know, there needed to be photographs of every item it needed to be laid out and all that to get ready to go down to the print shop. And so, uh, anyway, applied for the job, did the interview, and uh, I, you know, however long later, I got the phone call that said I had gotten the job. So, wow. So, we packed up, and um, I did end up getting married at the time. So, got married, moved to Enid, and started the new job all 
in the same month, 1989. And so, so Jim Evans, who later became my father-in-law, but at that time was my boss, was the reason I moved back to Enid, Oklahoma. Had I not looked in the paper that Sunday and applied for that job, I'd probably still be uh, in Oklahoma City with a completely different life. And so, I um, hope that microphone doesn't make a noise there. But um, so anyway, so ended up back in Enid and uh, did my first ad, laid it out. And they came to me and they said, hey, Curtis, you need to enter, you know, the ad was full of all these items that were on sale. And they said, you need to enter those items uh, the UPC codes for those items into a sales batch. And I said, okay, what's a sales batch? And, you know, they explained to me that all the items, you know, you put them in by UPC code and then you put the re retail price and then the sales price. And that way, when they rang them up at the register, uh, they rang up at the sales price. And they said, you know, here's an IBM XT, you enter them there. And I said, okay, how do I turn it on? So at this point, I had never turned on a computer in my life. I didn't really even understand, I didn't know that there was little desktop computers at this time. Um, had gotten all the way through college and uh, never used a computer in college. Even though I had a graphic advertising design degree in 1986, uh, had never used a computer. So here it was, 1989, I was turning on a uh, computer for the first time. So anyway, it was an IBM XT running on DOS and it just had this sales batch program in there. But I quickly became fascinated by this computer, even though the only thing in there to do was DOS. And I, I kind of learned that if you typed in different words, things happened like format and save and rename. And, and I, just, I just thought it was so cool that, that you could make these things happen. And so, so that was the beginning of my love of computers. Next came, I uh, heard about this thing that had come out called Windows. And so I went to Jim Evans, my boss, and I said, hey, there's this new thing called Windows that you can do a lot more. We can keep a calendar and do email and, and all this really cool stuff through, through this program called Windows, but you kind of need a better computer. So he... We went down and we picked out all new, compu all new computers for the office, um, got the newest IBMs, I believe, at the time, and um, installed Windows on all of them. I learned Windows and continued to do the ads, and so then started doing email and getting a little more into the computers, and then found out that there was a program called PageMaker. And so I told Jim, hey, there's this program called PageMaker that I could actually type in the text for the ad and paste it. And so now at this time, 1989, we were still using wax on the back of the photos and the clip art and border tape to lay out the ads on these paper boards. So um, I told him that if we got PageMaker, I could typeset the ads, cut out the text, wax it on the back and put it on the ad, and then we wouldn't have to send that to Scrivener, my old employer, to have the typesetting done, but we would still send it down there to do the printing. He said, okay, buy it and learn it. So I did, so I bought PageMaker and learned it. A little bit later, learned that Corel Draw, you could actually lay out the entire ad on the computer, do the typesetting, scan the images in, um, I think, yeah, at that point. And then you could send a disk with the file on it down to Scrivener and they could just print the files from the disk. So started doing that. So I'm learning all these graphic design programs, learning computer, then came along, uh, heard this thing called uh, the internet, uh, started messing with the internet, just due to learning all this on the job, um, and then websites, and that all led to did you know learning that process and learning more and more and more led up to 1999. So basically, 10 years later, when I bought my first um, domain name and built cartoons.com. But okay, so let me back up a little bit. So 
so seven years, six and a half, seven years into my job at Evans, Betty Evans had opened a fabric store next to the pharmacy retail store that I was the advertising director of. And so I would help her out with some of her ads and stuff as well. And so my office was basically in the back in between both stores. So you could get to my office <clears throat> going through the back of both stores. And so somewhere along the line, okay, so then uh, about six years six and a half, seven years into that job, I ended up getting divorced from my wife at that time. And so then I was single and working at Evans. And then Betty Evans' daughter moved back to Enid and she started helping her mom run the fabric store, but then also was helping her dad and was manager of the retail store. So, um, so I met her and was doing ads and then, uh, months after that, uh, was going out to a birthday party one night and I stopped by the store to buy a birthday card, uh, for the lady whose party we were going to. Denise happened to be working that night and checked me out. And after I bought the card, I said, Hey, we're going to go to this birthday party. If you would like to come out and have a drink, meet us at this place. And um, if you don't have anything to do. Well, she, she, you know, normally wouldn't do that. She liked to be a homebody at that time. But for some reason, she decided to come out. And so basically, that was how we ended up started dating. We dated um, and then we ended up getting married and um, had two kids. And then after the second kid came along, that is when I quit working for my father-in-law and moved home. And that's when I started my online businesses. And um, then Evans Drug just became one of my clients. And so just because I said, you know, I was going to go for it and applied for a job that in my mind, I didn't think I was qualified for, but went ahead and went for it. It was, you know, moving to a new town. But so look at all the stuff that going for it led to, you know, it led to me, you know, coming back to my hometown and then learning a computer, learning the internet, learning graphics programs, uh, finding my wife and having kids and, um, you know, just everything that I have today is basically because of Jim Evans, my father-in-law, and again, who passed away this last weekend. So just wanted to kind of relay that story real quick. Um, some people may not know that, but um, that is basically how I ended up, um, you know, with my wife and my kids and my businesses and, um, you know, the reason I do Enid Buzz and that Buzz guy and, and all that good stuff. And so, so even today, um, you know, a couple decades later, I, um, I am still doing advertising for Evan Strug. I go into the store. And so since um, uh, several years ago, Jim retired and eventually sold the company to the head pharmacist at the time. So now, now I go in and I do the advertising for the new owner. It's still called Evans Drug, but I go in and I do the advertising. And once a week, I go in and I do a live, a Facebook Live with somebody in the store just to help promote the store. And so uh, began working there in 1989, and here it is, 2021, and I'm still doing advertising. Uh, basically, they just are another one of my advertising clients on Enid Buzz. So full circle there. Um, you know, my daughters have grown. One's a freshman at OU, the other's a senior in high school. And uh, Denise and I um, just celebrated our 22nd or 23rd. I think the last one would have been the 23rd, 23 year uh, wedding anniversary. And so, um, and uh, two and a half years ago, Betty passed. And so both of them are gone. 
Um, but anyway, so that is my story. And so I want to encourage you guys out there, if you're thinking about jumping out and doing something, but you're afraid to do it, if you don't know, you know, you're thinking, I don't know what the consequences could be. Um, I want to tell you to go for it. You know, you, you just got to do it. If you're wanting to start a blog, if you're wanting to start a podcast, if you're wanting to start a video channel, if you're wanting to write a book, if you're wanting to create a product, if you're wanting to switch jobs, um, you got to do it. Just do it. Uh, don't, you know, don't jump out there with without having some knowledge. You know, I don't want you to, you know, if you're in the if you're a roofer, I don't want you to quit roofing and go try to be a dentist. You know, you, you, you got to have kind of a plan. You've got to be kind of ready, not, not 100% ready, but, um, you know, enough that you can fake it until you make it. And I don't highly suggest you totally fake it until you can make it. I don't, like I say, don't, don't go applying for a job or jumping into a, a job or a something that you don't know anything about. Um, but like starting a podcast, you're not going to be able to start a podcast on, let's say, race cars if you don't know anything about race cars. But if you know a lot about race cars, but you've never been a podcaster, you can do it. So start that podcast. Start talking about race cars. The podcasting will come along. You'll get better at talking. You'll get better at um, your sound quality. You'll get better at you know writing titles and, and description and uploading them and, and the length and doing interviews. And all that comes with you know just uh, experience, but you gotta have that initial knowledge, which would be your knowledge of race cars. And so uh, I just wanna highly encourage everybody out there to go for it, to take a chance. Uh, you, you know, uh, with me, took a chance and it turned out super duper great. So um, you never, and, and you don't want to get, you know, five years, 10, out, 10 years down the road and wonder, you know, where would I be? What would have happened if I hadn't taken that next step? So, so basically what you're wanting to do is take a step to improve yourself, you know, a better job, a better opportunity, you know, and even sometimes there are some opportunities where maybe you take a step backwards knowing that that backward step is going to lead to a leap forward once you get, you know, the experience or, you know, pay your dues in whatever you're doing. So don't be afraid to go for it. Don't be afraid to try. Always be looking for the next opportunity. Um, you know, every time I got a job out of college, I was always looking for the next job because I knew that that job that I was in was not, I was not going to settle for that. It was just a, I needed a job to pay the bills. So always have a job to pay the bills. Don't start a side gig or a, you know, one of those deals without having full-time work. You got to have income coming in. But while you're working that full-time job, knowing in the back of your mind that it is a temporary job to get you to the next level, if, if you really hate it, you can make it through. You know, tell yourself, hey, I can do this job for a year while I prepare myself for the next level, while you're getting the experience, while you're building the portfolio, while you're um, learning the knowledge while you're, uh, you know, honing the product that you're going to sell. Um, so anyway, always make sure that you're working. Always make sure that you've got full-time job as a backup plan, but always be striving for that next level, that next opportunity. And if it presents itself like it did for me, again, I applied for a blind ad back in my hometown, not knowing who it was, not knowing if I was 100% qualified for the job, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to see what happens. Uh, the worst that could happen was I didn't get the job and I stayed where I was or I applied for a different job in Oklahoma City. So um, you guys go for it. I hope everybody is having a great 2021. I uh, hope January went well for you guys. Let's all create something really great here in 2021. February is a great month to get something going. So you guys uh, send me comments. Uh, my email is buzz at buzzheadmedia.com or curtis at cartoons.com. Send me an email. Tell me what you guys are working on. What? Tell me what story you guys did where you went for it, where you jumped out there and decided to go for it. I'd love to hear those stories. I can share those here on the podcast. 
I'm going to start a new thing where I'm going to be um, Ken Hunnell. If you listen to uh, several episodes back, we did an interview. We're going to be doing every month. He and I are going to get together and just talk about stuff. A lot of times it'll be business or being an entrepreneur or things that are going on. We'll bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, We were going to do that this week, but due to the funeral, it's going to be moved to next week. So expect an episode with Ken Hunnell next week. Uh, You're going to love whatever we're talking about. And uh, so I'm going to try to start maybe doing more of that where I have some type of a feature every month where you guys can look forward to. So anyway, uh, this is a short episode. I appreciate you guys checking in and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.